Good day, my dear investors. I hope you're doing great today. Last week, I asked you to give me some tickers so that I can go through them, analyze a little bit and give you my opinion on it. However, be careful. Today, we will analyze 10 stocks, but not analyze. I will just give you my view on the companies, on where you should dig deeper and a little bit on the market outlook for the companies, the longer term perspective. I haven't gone into depth in any of those companies because I'm simply not attracted and I have a lot on my research plate so that I cannot devote that much time. But in the screening process, I'm always screening companies. I'm always looking at companies. So I will screen also the other 30 companies you recommended. Don't worry. Nevertheless, I will just give you an opinion, which sometimes I think just an opinion, a longer term perspective, uh, perspective on the sector can be much more valuable than a 40 page report that I usually do on stocks. So let's start and you will see how I think a little bit in the screening process. That's the key of this video. Now the first company, Sprint. Highly competitive environment, negative cash flows and when positive those cash flows are mostly used in capex. Price earnings ratio is distorted from a one-off event, not something I would go in the company because I definitely don't like telecoms. I sense too much disruption ahead. There can be winners, there can be losers, there can be everything. But for me to go into a telecom like this blindfolded is not something that I like because the disruption that can happen five years from now could obliterate any positive returns that you get up till then. So telecoms, I think it's an asymmetric risk reward in the long term, which I'm not going into and I haven't researched and I prefer to research stocks with better outlooks. Second company on the list was T-Mobile, unfortunately again a telecom stock, boasting it will be the first to launch 5G nationwide in the US, doing buybacks that will give some return. They are a growth story, they are growing 1,500 retail stores, so they are going into retail to compete against their competitors. One-off event again, distorted profits. So let's say there's nothing spectacular that can happen there. Market should be valued it fairly. A lot of analysts are covering. So what you see is what you get there. However, I don't like, as I said, telecom. So I might be biased. I didn't go in depth research. So just my opinion, my view, that's it. Now this is a stock Fannie Mae where again, I would need to go into depth. I need to, I would need to go into the lawsuits and calculate the probabilities of those outcomes to determine whether there will be value for shareholders or not. So if you want to dig deeper into this company, you have to do that. Again, I have a lot on my research plate and such a legal issue, legal investment is not on my research plate now. So I say again, next. Now, this is very interesting. Gold money, it's a Canadian precious metals company that allows you to do payments around pressure metals. It exploded in the last quarter of the year because, uh, because all of those companies offering precious metals started offering cryptocurrencies and it was, whoa, crazy. And then it exploded to above six only to drop like a rock as soon as cryptos went down. Now, even with the crypto boom, the company reported earnings per share of five cents in the quarter, which we will dig later and you will see how you dig deeper into a company. I don't know these companies, but I will immediately tell you what's my view on it. So without the crypto, it would be probably losing money as it was the case in the past. Now, I don't know how they measure revenue, but if you look at here, revenue is 149 million. Cost of sales 147. So the gross margin, or I would call it the net revenue, is 2 million. So it's a company with a net revenue of 2 million. If those are trades and their revenue is 2 million, then that's not revenue. That's their business. It would be like American Express taking revenue on all their trades. It would be the biggest company in the world. So that's one question. To dig deeper, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Further, the sec fourth line gain loss and revaluation of inventory. So they have inventories, probably pressure metals or perhaps even cryptocurrencies, which went up and they have revalued their inventory. So the bulk of everything that's going on is the revaluation of inventories. Nevertheless, what they did as soon as the cryptocurrency craze hit the stock, 
they immediately went for private placements and issued stocks. They got 38 million in financing thanks to the crypto craze. So very, very well played by the management. Let's immediately issue stocks, dilute, get the money to survive longer. Hmm. Very interesting how that worked out for them well. Now, if you follow Peter Schiff on YouTube, you can see here with this company a little bit in depth, what is the point of his YouTube channel and what's he doing with all of the marketing. Now on November 14, 2016, the company acquired 100% of the voting rights and outstanding shares of Schiff Gold from Peter Schiff in exchange for 700,000 common shares. That deal was valued at 2.7 million. Further, in addition to owning the company, at the same time the company entered into a consulting services agreement to receive marketing and client referral services from Schiff. So your emails uh, or emails of the clients, contacts, number and everything in consideration for the consulting services agreement, the company will provide consideration of shares, warrants, warrants, etc, etc. So they need customers and if you are dealing in precious metals, Schiff is the person to go to and he is dealing, making money on those transactions. So that's the back end of the YouTube business, let's say. That's just so interesting how much you can find in annual reports. And annual reports are the key to analyzing a company. Number seven, Hymax Technologies. They are betting on sales of a 3D camera to double sales. They're finishing a new building. However, Citron Research make a tweet which destroyed the market capitalization. So December 6, they said that it's a fraud and the stock dropped like a rock since then. Companies like this, which are in China and people saying are a fraud can even not be a fraud, but then the market can consider them a fraud forever. And you can never get to healthy pastures with such stocks. So really in-depth analysis of whether it is a fraud, what is the potential, what is the yield if it's not a fraud, etc., etc. So a lot of research to be done here. If it's fraud, if you can find it's a fraud, then it's a short. So interesting put it on my short list to research in depth and see what are the possibilities there very interesting healthy market cap so a good good play short for the long a little bit less but if it is a fraud if you do something like that then you can research in depth thank you for the pick now, Bank of America, and this is something very interesting. Everybody is now crazy about bank stocks because interest rates will help them increase their profits and everything. Yes, but aren't you a bit too late to the party? The stock was below 15, what, at 10, just a year and a half ago, and now it's at 32. And now everybody's rushing in. Okay, the price to earnings ratio is now 20, it's forward price to earnings ratio is 13, but that's always a bank. As interest rates increase, the defaults will always increase. So also that's something to take into account. Nevertheless, as always, what you pay is what you get. Highly followed company, think Buffett owns it. So if you're happy with the dividend, if you're happy with the risks, why not? But I would have bought it a year and a half ago, ago if I was interested in such companies. I'm just going to cl close here on the Bank of America. Risk is the function of the price you pay. So you can see that it can go to 15 and below because it was there just a year and a half ago. So it might go there two years, three years from now. And that's the risk. It's always the function of the price you're paying. Another financial that's very interesting, again, similar as Bank of America, exploded in the last year, few years. And I see a lot of positive things about Goldman Sachs, higher volatility, it make profits and so on and so on. It's possible, but this is what you have to do. You have to go through every each one of those segments that they operate see what are the revenues what are the profits and how will the profits be affected by higher interest rates and by the new environment when you do that you get a model over the long term you take put in the cyclicality and then you get to a price for goldman a long-term price as you can see the stock is very volatile so the long-term price might be much higher or much low lower it's something you have to see about that Endo International, generics, high leverage and declining revenues and prices, somewhat like Teva. I have no visibility into how that's going to pan out. I have to do more research on that. If I do, you will know about the 
generics. That's something I plan on doing in the future. Patriot One technologies, safety scanning, uh, arm scanning, so that it unfortunately exploded after the Las Vegas shooting and what happened in Florida, which is an unfortunate way to invest. However, this company still needs financing. They are issuing units and warrants. They are hoping on an international expansion. They are issuing units and warrants as the bad things happened and they're taking advantage of the higher price. But no price, no order, no revenue, absolutely no idea on what will happen there. I didn't find it in the investor relation and unfortunate that it spiked after terrible things happening. What's also interesting uh, their products work in 93% of cases. Which set the business you want to, to work it 100% of cases? 93% is simply not enough because those who want to do something will be in the 7% if they have intentions to do something. And Terra Resources, natural gas, 6 billion company. The company believes it is an inflection point, but the market doesn't as the stock is really beaten down. Now, if you look at what they want to do, they present the five year cash flows on the basis of oil at 50, uh, oil at 60, sorry, and gas at 2.85. So it's a play on oil and gas. If they hit that numbers in the next five years, okay, if oil falls to 30, if gas falls below 2.85, bang, then it's a completely different story. And that's why the price and the risk is in the price. So be careful with. It might look too cheap because it was much higher in the past, but it is like that for a reason. Now, CD Projekt Red, a Polish stock, let's see, very, very interesting. They make online games, other games, video game publisher, distributor in Warsaw, founded in 1994. So very interesting if you're in the game industry. What I see here is sales have dropped a little bit in Polish Lotus. However, the net profit is huge. And if their new games continue to do well, they will also probably do well. However, the price earnings ratio is already at 45. And you have to understand the gaming industry, the cyclicality of games, the companies, the how they grow, how they crash, what's the risk reward when investing in that. It sounds like an interesting story. Polish company, small cap on the Polish stock exchange, also traded in Stuttgart if you're interested. Very interesting stock, however, I have no visibility in the Polish gaming industry and how that goes on globally and what will be their next hit if there will be. The first 10 companies, hope you liked my thinking and I'm looking forward to your comments. Where should I think deeper or do you agree with what I think? Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video.